Okay, I want to take a few minutes and I want to talk about ocean currents and their importance to climate. Before we get to their importance to climate, I want to talk about how they're formed. To do that, we need to go back to currents in the atmosphere. So, we talked about there's an uneven heating of the Earth's surface and the most direct rays of the sun strike near the equator. This sets up a convection pattern near the equator where the hot air rises away from the surface. As it rises, it cools. This forms moisture in the air, so there's lots of rain near the equator. It spreads out, and as it cools off, it starts to sink back to the earth, and it sinks back at about 30 degrees north or south of the equator. completing a convection pattern. As that air descends, it's now dry, and as it's compressed, it's warmed, which makes hot, dry air come back down. So you have a lot of deserts at about 30 degrees north or south of the equator. Now, as this air is moving, the air near the surface is what we call the prevailing wind. So typically, winds in the tropics, between 30 degrees and 30 degrees, which is a little beyond the tropics, blow toward the equator. Now as they're blowing toward the equator, the Earth is rotating. And because of that rotation and the Coriolis effect, it causes um, the wind to be shifted uh, and as it moves toward the equator, it's, the air is moving slower up here, the earth is outrunning it, so the wind is shifted toward the west. So the prevailing winds here from 30 degrees to 30 degrees blow toward the equator, and they blow from the east to the west. Since they come from the east, we call them easterlies. Uh, more commonly, we call these the trade winds. So here in the northern hemisphere, they're blow the wind is predominantly blowing southeast. In the southern hemisphere, it's blowing northeast. Now, we talked about that as this air descends, while a lot of it comes back toward the equator, some of it goes in the opposite pattern. As it moves over the air surface, it's rewarmed and it rises. This happens at about 60 degrees. Now, here, the wind near the Earth's surface is moving away from the equator toward the pole. So for us, our dominant wind moves from south to north. As it moves from south to north, the Earth is moving, turning more slowly as you get closer to the pole. So instead of the Earth outrunning the wind, the wind outruns the Earth, and it curves the other way. So our prevailing wind goes from south to north, and it goes from west to east. So since it's coming from the west, we call those westerlies. That's pretty easy to remember if you just think about our weather. So with our weather, our storms come from Alabama across Georgia into South Carolina. They're moving from the south to the north and from the west to the east. They're westerlies. What I want to talk about next, though, is how this affects currents of the ocean. So if we look, this same wind pattern is going to prevail over the ocean. So as it blows, it's going to carry the water that is on the surface this way. So that's going to take the warm water from off the coast of Florida and Georgia, from the Caribbean, from the Gulf, and it's going to carry that water toward Europe. We call that the Gulf Stream. So we're now going to take our understanding of prevailing winds and we're going to try to explain ocean currents, particularly the, the currents on the, the surface of the ocean. So we just showed and explained why the wind is blowing from the south to the north and from the west to the east. So these westerlies carry the warm water from the Gulf off the coast of Florida toward Europe. This causes Europe, which is at a very high latitude, to stay much warmer than, say, northern Canada. 
Now, if there were no continent in the way, this trend would continue. However, when this current gets to Europe, it can't keep going that way. It's cut off. So one of two things happens. Either the current has to turn back to the south, or the current has to turn to the north. I want to focus first just on this current turning back to the south. So as this current turns back to the south, the warm water up here as it has gone up to the northern regions cools. So a warm current is carried to Europe, but it's now cooled and it's forced back along the continent. Now, here the, it's working against the wind, but the continents are in the way. But once it crosses that 30 degree line, the wind shifts, the prevailing wind shifts. So remember from 30 to 60 degrees, we had a westerly blowing from west to east. But once we cross below that line, we have an easterly. So now the trade winds, the easterlies, blow back this way, and that cool current is carried and warms back up, and it completes a cycle. This is called the North Atlantic Gyre. The same basic pattern happens on different parts. I want you to notice in the northern hemisphere, this gyre goes clockwise between 30 and 60 degrees. But here, it goes counterclockwise. But again, it's the same pattern formed because of the winds. Now, we're focusing here on the Atlantic, but the same thing can happen in the Pacific, and it does. So if we come over here, if we were off the coast of Southeast Asia, you have these westerlies that are blowing the warm current from Southeast Asia toward the coast of North America. That keeps this part of the coast warmer than that. So even though San Francisco is about the same far north as Washington, D.C., Washington, D.C. has much colder winters. San Francisco has much milder winters. So we have that current which is affecting the climate. Again, when it gets here, there's one of two choices because the continent's in the way. Either it turns back south, crosses back over that 30-degree line, and is blown back to complete a cycle, or it turns back north where you get a cycle in the opposite direction. So hopefully you're starting to understand why these currents occur the way they do. Now it's a little confusing down here at the bottom and that's because of the type of projection. Uh, in order to see the whole globe we've stressed it out here so it looks a little weird by Antarctica but you can still explain it in terms of the winds for the surface currents. Now with ocean currents we I focused my discussion with the currents on the top because we can explain those with winds. But within the ocean itself, there are convection currents. So just like we talked about that the hot air would rise and cool, and as it cools, it would sink back down, the same thing is happen, happening in the ocean. The warmer water will rise and the cooler water will sink. So convection currents occur within the ocean as well as within the atmosphere. These drive the ocean conveyor belt, which transfers energy and nutrients from the deep ocean to the surface and from the surface to the deep ocean. This highly simplified picture is meant to show you that conveyor belt. I want to focus first on the, the surface currents, the shallow currents, the warm currents. So here we said that the Gulf Stream is blowing toward Europe. Now, if it gets forced north, it cools. And when it cools, it's going to sink. So as it sinks, that's going to form a convection current. So we're putting this on a flat image so it looks two-dimensional, but you have to think there's depth here to the water. So the red is on the top and the blue is on the bottom. So that is a convection current just like we were looking at in the air. The, the warm water is moving on the top and it's sinking and the cool is moving on the bottom. So you'll notice that the cool currents are, always, are almost always moving in the opposite direction of the warm currents on the surface. So the warm currents are going this way, the cool currents in the deep water goes back. The warm currents are going this way, the cool currents in the deep water is going the opposite direction. It's a convection pattern. The thing that I was trying to emphasize here is that, is that moves energy within the ecosystem. It also moves nutrients. So the oxygenated air on the surface, when it sinks, carries those nutrients down to the deep water. When the deep water comes to the top, it carries nutrients from below back to the surface. And there's an energy transfer in the ocean can soak up huge amounts of energy, which will be important when we talk about other elements of climate and climate change.